altered form is actually even heavier, so who knows? We might just... Oh my god! What? Bruh. What is up and welcome back to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Today we are finally going after my favorite legendary from the Sinnoh region, the Dark Lord, Giratina. And it all begins right here in Veilstone City because we've got to make our way down to the Turn Back Cave. And I believe the way you access that is through the route down this way. We've got Route 214 and I believe once you've beaten the Pokemon League and maybe gotten the National Dex as well, yeah, I'm pretty sure you need the national decks, actually. Uh, there should be a new path that opens up. We've got a little gap in the fence that leads to the spring path. Now, this music, definitely not very springy. How you holding up, Zip? Spacing out? Well, that makes sense. Giratina, well, it doesn't exactly have anything to do with space, but... Oh, okay, I guess Zip is just gone. Which means it's time to spray repel. Because in order to obtain Giratina, we're going to have to go through quite a lot of exploring, both here in the Spring Path and then the Turn Back Cave I mentioned. And in Pokemon Platinum, this was actually the place where you exited the Distortion World after the whole Giratina event. But of course, we're playing Diamond and Pearl, or at least the remakes of Diamond and Pearl, so instead we do things kind of backwards. We actually enter through the Spring Path and then the Turn Back Cave, which we can find down this way. And as you can see, it is very foggy, so smash that like button to clear away the fog. Or, I guess, summon Staraptor to do it for us, as we've got a hieroglyph right in our face. Past three pillars to the sleeping, before 30 is surpassed. What the heck are you talking about? <laughs> Honestly, if I hadn't done this before, like when I was younger, or looked it up on the internet, I would have no idea how to interpret it. Like, I'm curious if anybody figured this out on their own without like any sort of guide because basically what they mean is we have to go walk past three pillars in these rooms or chambers of the turn back cave and basically no matter which door you go through the next room will be completely random so even though it might seem like i'm taking some kind of oh hey well there's the first pillar one three okay so basically you're gonna want to go through Three rooms that contain pillars like the one right here in the center before you go past 30 rooms in total. I haven't really been keeping count of how many rooms we entered already, but like I said, it's totally random. Like, you just have to get lucky and hope that you find three pillars before 30 rooms have passed. And I've heard that the easiest way to do this is actually just to keep going straight the whole way, but I don't know, that seems kind of boring. I like to play things a little more dangerously. Although, right now, I seem to just keep going straight, so, I don't know. Let's, uh, test that theory. Or not. I can't do what the other peoples do. Even though, like I said, this puzzle's totally random, so I'm pretty sure everybody does it totally different. But, uh, yeah, not really getting too lucky so far. And as I mentioned, I'm not really counting how many rooms we've gone through in total. But we've only seen one pillar, which has got me a little bit worried, because like I said, you gotta get three pillars before going through 30 rooms total. The only rule to this thing is you can't go back through the door that you came, or it'll lead you back to the entrance, so just make sure to go through any of the other three doors, as long as it's not the one that you came through. And hey, there we go, we've got the second pillar, so now I should say 2-3? Two, 2-15! Two, oh, okay, so 15 means the rooms that we've gone through in total. Okay, so we're only like halfway. I'm pretty sure we can do this. Basically, we've got 15 more rooms and only one pillar to find. So if we found two in the first 15, the odds are definitely with us. Like, we should be able to find another pillar before we hit 30. But again, it's totally random. So at the end of the day, I don't know. But aside from just catching Giratina in these games, there's also another event. Which is... Oh man, I thought that was the pillar room. Anyway, uh, you might have noticed in the thumbnail, Giratina's looking a little different here in the remakes. And that is because there's a bonus event over in Ramanas Park after you've actually caught Giratina here in Turn Back Cave. And we're going to do that, like I said, after we catch it because, well, you can't do it beforehand. So, let's just hope that... Oh, okay. I thought that was... Uh, 
sign that we messed up or something, but thankfully we're still good. It was just my repel running out. I haven't been counting the rooms, but uh, you know, we just gotta cross our fingers and hope that we see that third pillar. But yes, after we've caught Giratina, we're gonna head on over to Ramanas Park, and there should be a battle with what many people are considering the hardest legendary Pokemon ever. Now, I am not saying this personally, it's just what I've heard on the internets, and uh, hey. No, we're back in the first room, are you kidding me, dude? And I've ran through so many repels. Oh gosh, this is not gonna end well. So, uh, let's try the other strategy of just going forward the whole time, and hopefully I have better luck with it. What? Are you kidding me? We just got the second pillar immediately. Okay, well, I guess this strategy seems to be working. Do we got three for three? Not quite. That would have been real crazy, but I'm just gonna keep going straight this time. I mean, it's totally random, like I said, so the chances are the same, but... I guess going straight makes it at least faster? I mean, it really depends on the layout of the room, like this one. We had to walk left, so might as well go through the left door and now resume going straight forward. Hey, there we go! 3 for 7, baby! Lucky 7! Now, once you've found the third pillar, any one of these exits will lead you to Giratina's room, I believe. So, let's step on through to the left, to the left, and... There it is, the Master of Darkness, the third member of the Creation Trio and my favorite legendary of Sinnoh, Giratina. So let's go ahead and save the game before fighting it. I do recommend having a Pokemon that can either sleep or paralyze it, as well as a bunch of Dusk Balls, because we are in a cave, of course, and Dusk Balls work the best in caves. So here we go, Bishon! Yes, that music! Oh, it fills me with determination! Giratina has appeared! That cry too, so nostalgic to me! Mainly because Pokemon Platinum is still, maybe to this day, my favorite Pokemon game. And Giratina is a huge part of it, so let's kick things off with a little bit of bite, actually. Even though we should probably just go for the Thunder Wave now, as it shares the pain with us. Okay. I think that hurt Giratina a little more than ourselves. Uh, our bite also did not do much there, so uh, yeah, let's just go for Thunder Wave. Or wait, I guess we could have just saved the Thunder Waving and instead put it to sleep with Hypnosis, but I guess it's too late. You know, like I said, it's kind of the same thing. Well, technically putting it to sleep is better, but it only lasts for like three to four turns or something. And I forgot to use my Quick Ball. What is up with me forgetting to use Quick Balls recently? <laughs> Last episode, we caught the legendary Doggos and Ho-Oh, and I think I only used Quick Ball on like two of those out of like... What the heck? What? Why did that give us more health? Are you kidding me? I mean, I'll take it. I know that Pain Split basically equals out your HP and then the opponent's HP, so if you're at like lower health than the enemy, then I guess you would gain back HP? It's kind of a weird move, but... I guess even though Luxray looked like it was low on health, Giratina, because it's much higher level, technically had more, and so we gained the health. <laughs> anyway, now that we've gotten it weaked, or weakened, and paralyzed, it's time to start tossing away those Dusk Balls. I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh no, Luxray. Now the one annoying thing is, because the rest of my team is at full health, if it uses Pain Split, it's actually gonna gain back some health, and we're gonna have to weaken it more. But at least right now, we're going for the Dusk Ball, so obviously that goes before any Pain Splitting. These are not working out so far, these Dusk Balls, but here it is, Giratina will go back to like, yellow HP, but I'm kinda scared to hit it with anything from Benedict. Did I see that right? Do I only have four Dust Balls left? Are you kidding me? No, this can't be. Okay, another Pain Split. Who has more health at this point? I don't even know. I guess we both had equal, because barely anything happened. And yes, I only have three Dust Balls left. Why did I forget? Not only to use my Quick Ball on the first turn, but also buy more Dust Balls. And that's like always my main suggestion is have plenty of Dust Balls. I forgot. My own rule number one. Because I do want to catch Giratina in the Dust Ball. I feel like I can't have it any other way. 
this has to be the one and it literally is the one the oh my god how have we been getting so lucky with the legendaries i still cannot believe last episode we caught him all in premiere balls and now the dust ball actually works when we only had one more left to go giratina will be added in the decks the renegade pokemon is said to live in a world on the reverse side of ours it appears in an ancient cemetery oh is that what turnback cave is i wasn't aware but hey we nicknamed our dialga and palkia so i feel like it's only fair that we nicknamed giratina too and thou shalt be iblis king of the devils a little bit of a scary nickname right there. <laughs> I guess you don't really need Zip anymore since he's fainted. And we've already caught Giratina, so Zip definitely served his purpose of getting it paralyzed for us. This is where that life sparkles. That where life has faded. A place where two worlds overlap. What are you talking about? <laughs> I just love how our character looks around like, uh, what is going on here? I, I don't understand, but, uh... Like I said, in Pokemon Platinum, this is where one of the portals to hell, I mean, the distortion world was, so I think that's what they're implying. Uh, that is not what I meant to do. I guess the exit is actually down this way where the light is coming out. But yes, now that we've caught Giratina, we can make our way over to Ramanas Park to take on, I guess, another Giratina? It's kind of weird actually how it works, but now that we've caught it though, we've got to make our way over to the park, as I mentioned. Before we step into the park, I want to check out Iblis outside in the battlefield or overworld or whatever. Small Giratina! <laughs> Why does he look like a little caterpillar or like some kind of bagworm? I don't know what it's called, but he just looks very sluggish. And I don't mean slow. I mean like literally a slug of some kind. I just love how it's floating like that. But once we do get the special Giratina in Ramanas Park, or I guess defeat it, we're going to be able to get the Grissius Orb and turn this Giratina into its origin form, which is the form that more people might be familiar with because it's the one on the cover of Pokemon Platinum. So we're going to need another Mysterious Shard. Thankfully, I've been grinding away, boys. I got a lot of Mysterious Shard Smalls and even more Mysterious Shard Larges. And as you'll see here below Mewtwo's Genome Slate, we will now have the Distortion Slate, which will let us access the Distortion Room. That's right, they actually put the Distortion World in the remakes. And everybody said, these are Diamond and Pearl remakes, not Platinum. They're not gonna put Platinum features. I mean, they don't actually have the Distortion World, but there, there's kind of a reference to it. And at least we did get Giratina, but... I don't actually know where the distortion room is. I feel like maybe it doesn't, oh. Okay, well that cave definitely wasn't there before, so I'm gonna assume this has to be the distortion room. Oh man, I'm getting all nostalgic. I just got goosebumps, even though this isn't as crazy as the distortion world from previous games, or well, just Pokemon Platinum basically, where we had waterfalls going upwards and pillars sideways. It does capture the vibe a bit, like the same colors and the spacey background, but I don't know. They definitely could have done more, I feel. Inside the slate goes, as the pedestal starts shining, we will summon. Giratina, the Dark Lord, this time for real. Look at that dude, that is terrifying. It might not be as strong as Ultra Necrozma, but it's definitely way scarier. And I've heard at least the battle is very, very difficult. So I'm gonna have my OG team. Thankfully, we can still access the box and get Travolta on out of there. Uh, I guess we could use Pachi as well. I don't know, I feel like there'd be something satisfying about taking Giratina down with itself. Kind of like facing your doppelganger or something. So let's hit Iblis with that full restore and we'll just use this squad that we've got right now to take on the Dark Shadow Giratina. Okay, one more step, I guess. Best cry ever. And the music just gets even better. Oh my goodness. Dark Giratina has appeared. Let's go. So immediately you're going to notice something about this Giratina is level 100. So it's a good thing we've got Iblis on the team. 
It does, of course, have Dragon Claw and Shadow Force, which are both going to be super effective. Oh, that's interesting. I never thought about it. But yeah, Giratina is weak to both of its own typings because it is a ghost and dragon. And then dragons are weak to dragon, ghosts are weak to ghosts. So basically, Giratina's biggest enemy is itself. But uh, it's going for Earth Power for whatever reason. Oh, okay, that's not really going to do it, bro. Like, you could have gone for Dragon Claw too. And it literally does have Dragon Claw. All right. Well, we vanish with the Shadow Force. And bro, that animation though. What the heck? That was so sick. Let's do it again. <laughs> Except I feel like, yeah, the Dragon Claw's coming. And it's probably going to one-shot us. Well, that's not good. Thankfully, we have a whole team still to try to take it down with. And a lot of my Pokemon are actually pretty good against Giratina because it is Ghost and Dragon. We can use Fairy, we can use Ice, we can use Dark moves against it. All three of those, we have Pokemon that are those types. So uh, let's go for the Shadow Ball with Yukina and hopefully survive an Earth Power with barely any health left. Oh goodness, that's not great. And that wasn't even Focus Sash either. I think I've actually got the Choice Specs. So this Shadow Ball should hurt a little bit more. Still not doing nearly enough though. And uh, you might be wondering why I haven't mentioned catching this thing. Well, let's just try it and see that you actually cannot catch it. So yeah, you're going to have to defeat this Giratina. There's no point in even trying because like, yeah, you can't even use the Pokeballs against it. Now I know Yukina is going to be slower, so we might as well just heal up right now. Benedict took some damage earlier. We're going to need that dude full. I think Benedict is going to be the key to beating this thing as it goes for Destiny Bond, bro. What are you trying to do right now? You actually thought I was going to kill you? I mean, I respect it. <laughs> Why did you go for Aura Sphere? What are you doing, dude? All right. Well, I mean, maybe Yukina can actually knock it down after all. But no, I'm not going to let you take Yukina out with me. You know what? Let's prove something right now. We can beat this Giratina without losing a single Pokemon. So we're going to swap out into the Eggs Benny. Hopefully it goes for Dragon Claw, which obviously wouldn't affect us. Okay, it goes for Aura Sphere instead, which is still not very effective. So Benny will just tank it. That was a critical hit too. That did nothing, dude. One more Dazzling Gleam should finish it as what? Like, what are you even doing at this point here, Tita? Are you okay, homie? Is that shadow kind of shrouding your vision? I mean, I can see those piercing red eyes. Clearly, you can see what you're doing, but why are you going for these moves that don't affect us, dude. I don't understand, but I'll take it. The dub against Shadow Giratina and a whole bunch of level ups. Benny, first one to hit level 70, jeez. All right, no need to catch that thing. No need to stress about having to, uh, what? I mean, that's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> Definitely reminiscent of the distortion world. Okay, now this, is definitely disorienting. Oh my gosh, the control steam is backwards too. Like when you press up, you actually go down. Oh yeah, this is definitely the distortion world I was expecting. That's just so cool though, dude. Even if it isn't the full distortion world from Platinum that some people might have been expecting, like this is so dope. The fact that they have a reference to it and the fact you can even catch Giratina and get its origin form in the game, like that's honestly enough to satisfy my platinum loving little heart. Okay, I do wish that the Battle Frontier was in the game. Like, I'm not gonna lie, that would have made me cry, but like, at least they're acknowledging the fact that Distortion World was a thing that existed. And all the way at the end of the platform, we will find the Grisius Orb, which we can, of course, use to transform Giratina into its origin form, or the one that's on the cover of Pokemon Platinum. So if I could somehow find this thing. I guess we'll just sort by newest and give that over to Iblis. Boom! Iblis has transformed. Unfortunately, it's still dead though. I don't think Pokemon can actually walk alongside you in the overworld if they're fainted, so we're gonna have to revive it, but there it is. Origin form Giratina, which is basically the one that we just fought in the shadow version. But out here, we should be able to see, yes, Iblis now in its true form. The Dark Lord is angry. I mean, Giratina is like always angry. That just makes sense. But man, that looks so awesome. Look at how fast it flies too. Those six arms just flailing about looks so freaking dope. Like Giratina is just the best legendary Pokemon. 
how are you about to fall over? Like, you're literally floating in the air. I don't think you can fall, bro. Let's check it out in the Pokedex, though. We've got the Renegade Pokemon, as we know, and if we hit left or right, you can actually see the different forms of Pokemon. So we've got Altered Form and Origin Form. Same Pokedex description, though. But one thing I actually haven't done yet in this game is do the Height Check. It's a feature that was in the Pokedex back in Ruby, Sapphire, and Diamond and Pearl, but I think they got rid of it starting from Pokemon Black and White, or maybe X and Y. The point is that this isn't in the current, like, modern day Pokemon games. You can't do the height check or the weight check. Oh, wait, that's uh, Regigigas, who seems pretty hefty, actually. Maybe we should weight check this dude first. So if you hit the R button, you'll see that our character gets launched into the sky and <laughs> that is amazing oh my god the way he wiggles out too okay <laughs> so yeah you can do this for every single pokemon and i believe giratina was actually heavier than regigigas somehow even though it's like a ghost i don't really get that but there it is 1400 pounds will have us pinned right into the moon as well uh the altered form is actually even heavier so who knows we might just oh my god what bruh <laughs> i'm at a loss for words that was just amazing like what i think that's actually the heaviest pokemon that i've got so far Yep, Giratina in its base form, heavier than even Dialga and Snorlax, and what the heck, Palkia, what have you been eating, bro? You're like half the weight of Dialga, or I guess because it's a steel type, that actually kind of makes sense, but yeah, we can height check this one as well, 17 feet tall, why is it so small when we actually send it out of the Pokeball? I don't know, bro, but even this one at 1500 doesn't quite shatter the moon, so Giratina Definitely gotta chill out on those puffins, like, bruh. <laughs> How are you blasting us straight through the moon? That's hilarious, dude. Oh yeah, Giratina's also supposed to be like 15 feet tall, so clearly this overworld model is not quite to scale, but I'm not sure if I would have preferred them do some kind of like custom overworld models for this game. Like I've seen someone suggest they could have used the Pokemon Rumble models. I don't know, I guess it would have been kind of cute and made more sense, at least them being so tiny. Yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. And next time, I believe we're going to be hunting after some more legendaries, but not quite in Ramanas Park. I want to finally head off to the final zone of this game. So stay tuned for that. Smash like if you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next episode.